Welcome to this week's edition of Flashback Friday, your opportunity to get some good review by listening to episodes from the past that Jason has handpicked to help you today in the present and propel you into the future. Enjoy. Welcome to the Holistic Survival Show with Jason Hartman. The economic storm brewing around the world is set to spill into all aspects of our lives. Are you prepared? Where are you going to turn for the critical life skills necessary to survive and prosper? The Holistic Survival Show is your family's insurance for a better life. Jason will teach you to think independently, to understand threats, and how to create the ultimate action plan. Sudden change or worst case scenario, you'll be ready. Welcome to Holistic Survival, your key resource for protecting the people, places, and profits you care about in uncertain times. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Holistic Survival Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we talk about protecting the people, places, and profits you care about in these uncertain times. We have a great interview for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds on the Holistic Survival Show. And by the way, be sure to visit our website at holisticsurvival.com. You can subscribe to our blog, which is totally free, has loads of great information, and there's just a lot of good content for you on the site. So make sure you take advantage of that at holisticsurvival.com. We'll be right back. Hey, it's my pleasure to welcome Brian Camden to the show. He is the founder of Harden Structures, LLC, and Harden Shelters, LLC. That's actually the full name is, is both of those together. And we're going to talk about an interesting niche that he has in the marketplace of building shelters, secure and, and, and protective shelters for people. And I'm just anxious to hear more about it. Brian, welcome. How are you? I'm doing fine, and thank you for allowing us to come on the show. Well, the pleasure is all mine. This is an interesting topic, and your company is located in Virginia Beach, Virginia, though, right? That's correct. Our main headquarters is here in Virginia Beach. We do have affiliates throughout the U.S. and Washington State, California, Texas, Colorado, the Carolinas, and New York, New Jersey. Okay, great. So tell us a little bit about what it is you do specifically. Well, it's Heart of Structures is a design build company that specializes in fortified homes, underground shelters, bomb shelters, hardened facilities of just about any kind you can imagine. We started out with a private client uh, who wanted one built right after the first Gulf War in 1991. And it kind of just took off from there. Uh, we are registered with the U.S. State Department that allows us to work on bomb shelters overseas. So most of our military work right now is concentrated in the Gulf region, in the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Kuwait, the Kingdom. Uh, we have worked in Jordan in the past. Um, we do have a couple of smaller projects in Australia, New Zealand, and in Europe. But it's a... Um, it's really whatever the client is envisioning. We can do a ballistic rated house that is completely off grid, capable, it uh, can withstand forced entry, armed assaults, and looks just like a nice built custom home. Uh, we can build uh, complete facilities as far as uh, multiple units on uh, two, three, four hundred acres, which we've done for organizations. And Generally speaking, these facilities are defensible and they're sustainable, which means if in case something does happen, there is no electricity, there is no water, there is no power, uh, these facilities can keep right on going. And do you typically recommend people build them from scratch, or should they modify a house they already own? Well, we can do both. It's obviously better to do it from scratch and take a piece of raw land and start right there. But a lot of people, if they're going to harden their primary residence, usually they'll look at doing either an addition onto the side or the hardened portions of the basement. Uh, what we try to do is blend this in to make it look like part of the original construction so that when you're looking at it, you can't tell that it's actually a hardened portion of the home. What are your clients saying to you when they when they call you out for a proposal or an estimate you know, on a job? What... What kind of things are they saying? What are they concerned about? Well, the current market, uh, which is about 60% of our business being fortified homes, their main concern is a breakdown in civilization. 
uh, breakdown in law and order, that type of uh, scenario. The overriding factor for them choosing this facility is asset protection. These clients identify their family as being their most important asset. And what they're doing is providing a asset insurance for them. These homes, especially if they're a secondary home, like a vacation home, they can serve a dual purpose. It's a place where the family can go uh, horseback riding, fishing, hiking, skiing. We built a number of them near ski resorts. And hopefully nothing ever happens. And they, they have a very nice second home. Then again, if something does happen, the family has a place where they can go and, and meet. Uh, it's already pre-stocked. They have a, uh, a plan in place for them to sustain themselves. They have a plan in place to protect it in case something happens. And it gives them the uh, asset insurance that they need to protect what they identify as their most important asset, that being their family. And tell us about what does what a typical job look like? Say someone's got a piece of land, they're building something from scratch. What are they building and what about it is hard? I mean, how do you do it? Like what's the, some of the techniques and the construction and, and what are some of the features? Well, what, what we tell our clients is this. To start out with the design of the home, have the family function drive the design. Do not have the hardening aspect of it. In other words, design the home as you would a normal home. Make sure your wife gets the bedroom and the bathroom she wants. Make sure the kids' rooms are all laid out. In in essence, we can harden almost any design there is. And we have found it through our experience that the first step in designing a, especially a fortified home for a family, is to design it to the family function, not to design it for the protection. Once the family function is established, they have the flow of the floor plan the way they want it, then we will take it. Generally speaking, a fortified home is rated to a ballistic rating of five. It's a UL rating of five, which means it can withstand one round from an AK-47 or a .30-06, which is the preferred weapon of the, um, the looter or the person assaulting the house. The exterior of the house is also fireproof, so you can't come up and throw a, a gasoline bomb on it somehow and try to burn it down. But when you look at the house from the outside, it's going to look like a, just a regular, nice vacation home. We can make them look out of log cabins. We can make them out of brick. We can do almost any type of exterior uh, appearance that they like. Then they all incorporate an underground component, a bunker or a shelter of one type or the other. It can be a wine cellar. It can be a fallout shelter. It can be a area where we put the mechanical and electrical rooms. Most of these shelters are protected against the effects of electromagnetic pulse, EMP, which would be generated either from a solar flare or from an EMP weapon or nuclear burst. The reason being is that we know that solar flares have always occurred and they are occurring again. And hardened structures knows from the the way the market has been for the last couple of years, that the U.S. government themselves are hardening against solar flares and for EMP. An EMP event is what would trigger a breakdown in civilization. Oh, my gosh. It it would be, if we had a solar flare or some sort of EMP blast, uh, well, I guess the EMP is the result of either one, but that would knock us back into the Stone Age. I mean, it is incredibly scary how, how much our civilization depends on electricity. And really, from the reports I hear and the shows I've done with prior guests, how unprepared we are for this. The grid will not withstand anything. And, you know, it would take eight to 12 months, maybe even more to rebuild the grid with transformers ordered from China. That's true. The grid itself, as it stands now, is is very fragile. We are working with uh, a number of electrical utility companies throughout the U.S. hardening uh, substations right now. Um, The transformers uh, that actually run the large utility grids, you're right, There's some are made in China. Uh, Besides for that, it's either South Korea or in uh, France. 
And these are not shelf items. These transformers usually take eight, nine, ten months to make. And when you consider that there's thousands of them that would probably go down, the uh, the, the congressional report on the EMP estimated the U.S. would be without power anywhere from five months to up to five years. And under that scenario, water runs out in about 48 hours, food runs out in about three or four days. And, you know, generally speaking, food riots would start soon thereafter. You you said ballistic level five, I believe. Now, is that for the windows or the walls or both? It has to be for everything. Yeah, the, I, I mean, uh, ballistic level five, you you said that's just one round from, say, an AK-47. Correct. I mean, that's, correct. that's not enough, is it? I mean, any assault would include more than one round. Well, now, that's one round hitting in exactly the same spot. Right. So that if someone was on the outside of the house and they were spraying the house with weapons, chances are no two bullets are going to hit exactly one behind the other. It can certainly be hardened to a a different level. But what you try to achieve is a balance between the client's budget and his protection needs. And when it comes to actually designing the facility, whether it be a fortified home or a bunker or what have you, The art to it is trying to achieve a condition that is called balanced survivability. And that is where the exterior envelope of the shelter or the home, the outside walls, the ceilings, the shelter systems and the shelter's subsystems can all survive the same threat and threat level at the same time simultaneously. In other words, there is no Achilles heel. And that's really why most of the people come to Hardin Structures. After 21 years, we have some of the top engineers in the industry doing this, and we have been on a uh, select list with the Army Corps of Engineers and a number of insurance companies. Let me take a brief pause. We'll be back in just a minute. Have you listened to the Creating Wealth series? I mean, from the beginning. If not, you can go ahead and get book one that shows one through 20 in digital download. These are advanced strategies for wealth creation. For more information, go to jasonhartman.com. And we talk about ballistic and fire threats, ballistic in terms of weapons, guns, and such. But does does someone for their home need an actual bomb shelter? Are these bomb shelters, or are those just the underground bunker portions of it? Or talk about that a little bit. In our opinion, no, they do not. The chance of a actual weapon being detonated, when I say a weapon, a nuclear weapon, being detonated here in the U.S. is extremely slim. In in fact, the uh, national planning scenarios say that the most likely detonation of, of a nuclear weapon here in the U.S. would be the detonation of a 10 kiloton improvised nuclear device in the business district of a major metropolitan city and delivered in the delivery van. You know, this would be the typical dirty bomb being blown up in downtown New York or Washington. The chance of a actual an ICBM being launched and hitting us, especially with the current anti-missile defense shield that's being constructed all all along our borders, in our opinion, is, is fairly nil. So the Shelters we would build, the underground portion of the shelter, is rarely ever uh, beyond what's called one bar of blast overpressure, which is about 15 pounds per square inch of applied uh, blast to the exterior wall. So we would design it mainly to take the earth loads and the live loads and the dead loads of the structure above and the ground surrounding it, and then beef it up a little more just in case there was some type of a, a seismic event, let's say, like an earthquake, along with some type of uh, small blast of it. But you're right, the actual bomb shelters, I think the only ones we've done in years have probably been located in the Middle East. You talk on your website about hemp a lot. I mean, EMP, but what's the H for? That's high altitude. Oh, high, the high, high altitude EMP. Yeah, okay. HEMP results from the detonation of a nuclear weapon in the atmosphere, right. which is mainly how they're going to do it. In Europe and in the Middle East, it's HAEMP, meaning high altitude electromagnetic pulse. 
Yeah, for DOD, Department of Defense, acronyms here, they just call it HEMP. Okay, so continue with the features. So you talk about bulletproof glass, well, level five, metal closing shutters, right? And then yeah. uh, what, what, do, what do you do inside the walls of the house itself that make it hardened? Is it just concrete or some other material? There's a variety of sources we can use here, and a lot of it's going to depend on the site conditions, the location, where we are geographical, what we have uh, to draw upon. We can design a level 8 ballistic rated home out of cinder blocks, a 10-inch cinder block that is grout filled will give you the same uh, protection, a cast-in-place concrete wall. So it's only eight, the, the eight cin- inches thick. The, the cinder blocks then are filled with something, right? So they're not hollow. Yeah, grout. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah, all the cells are grout filled with a 3,000 psi concrete. You can use a regular cast in place concrete wall of about eight inches thick. You can use what's called a ICF, which is an insulated concrete form. I'm sure you've seen it on houses. It looks like the house is going up with styrofoam, and then they pour concrete in it. A 10-inch ICF wall wow, that is will thick. achieve a ballistic rating of UL-8. Okay, and what is uh, what is 8? You talked about 5. What is 8? What does the 8 rating mean? An 8 is, right now, UL ratings go to 8, which is multiple rounds of a AK-47 hitting in the same location. There is a new classification of 10, which is designed for the uh, 50 caliber. Uh, we have never built one yet, and I don't think you can get the doors and the windows for them yet. But the thickness of a wall uh, to withstand a 50 caliber round would probably end up having to be probably 12 inches thick. Twelve? That is unbelievable how thick. I mean, 12 inches of solid concrete for a 50 cal, but for an AK-47, 10 inches, it needs to be that thick of concrete? Well, there's a, I'm sure there's a safety factor involved in it, but right, right now, Underwriters Laboratories, UL, is what, those are the formulas we follow. Wow. Those are the formulas that the Department of Defense have adopted also, so it's, I'm sure they've done testing on it to, uh, you know, to establish these ballistic levels. It's, it's, it's kind of the same as blast, you know, uh, you, when you're calculating, um, uh, an actual bomb shelter, whether it be above ground or below ground, you know, you you figure the uh, the yield of the weapon, you know, 5 kiloton, 10, 20 kiloton, the height of the burst, the distance of, from the burst to the uh, shelter, and then any geographical or site uh, shielding that's around it, and then the coverage on top of it. Amazing. Wow. Just amazing. And we, I mean, what's the typical like cost per square foot for the level eight home that you're talking about? Well, it's a level five. Or level five. Look, okay. Yeah. Most people get a level five. A regular custom house, if you were just to go out and build it right now yourself, it's going to cost you anywhere from 80 to $120 a square foot, depending on the level of finishes that you pick on the inside, you know, paneling and carpet and stuff. And, and you could even spend a lot more than that, by the way, but go ahead. You certainly can. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> a ballistic rated house is going to cost you anywhere from 210 to about $350 a square foot. Okay, so it's and about it's about two and a half to three and a half times the cost then, right? Well, all things being equal, is that about right? Yeah, it maybe not quite twice as much. And we can achieve the ballistic rating in a number of ways. It doesn't have to be concrete. We can use a, a fiberglass resin panel. There's a number of companies here in the U.S. that make it that you can attach right to the uh, studs in the wall on the outside. So there's a number of cost-saving measures if the client wants to go you know, in that direction on it. An underground bunker, a cast-in-place reinforced concrete bunker, is going to cost anywhere from 350 to about $700 a square foot. And the factors that will affect the cost will be, number one, blast overpressure. Mainly, how thick do we have to make the walls and the ceiling? Is it a one-bar, two-bar, three-bar blast overpressure? That's going to be the number one cost determinant. After that, it's going to be geotechnical conditions and site conditions. When we excavate down, are we going to hit rock? Are we going to hit water? 
Is there a road leading up to the building site? Do we have to run power up to it? Is there water up there? You know, what are the site and the geotechnical conditions? The other factor is going to be the extent of EMP shielding. Do we just shield the life safety system, the electrical and mechanical, or do we have to shield the entire shelter? Some of our clients wear a pacemaker, so that means we have to shield the entire shelter. The shielding for EMP can be expensive in and of itself. And the last factor is... Well, how, client... how much is the EMP shielding? What does that add to it? Well, that'll add right at around 50 to $60 a square foot. And that's a square foot on the walls and the ceiling. Okay, so now you're up to total square footage uh, per square foot price of, what do you say, 210 up to three. No, for a bunker, it's going to run about three fifty to seven hundred dollars. Right, but that's a bunker. Foot. We're just talking about the house itself, right? I mean, there are two things we're discussing here. One is the house, and the other is the underground shelter, right? Correct. Is, is that that's correct? correct? Okay, so uh, we're just talking about the house right now. What? Okay. You know, in terms of that cost. So, do you want to just change any of your numbers or reiterate them? No, no. The for for a house itself, a ballistic rated house. Anywhere from 200 to uh, 350 a square foot. And here again, it, a lot of it's going to depend on, again, the level of finishes on the inside. The actual ballistic rated doors, windows, and the exterior shell, there's, uh, those products are fairly common right now to procure and, and for us to purchase. If the client wants additional shielding, EMP shielding, outside of where his heat pump is or his solar system and stuff like that, then, you know, yes, that, that would cost more. The other factors that take it up are the offensive and defensive components incorporated into the design of the house. You know, some people want it where, um, depending on what the side is, you know, they may, may want the driveway coming up to have a hair turn in it, have a choke point. Uh, they may want to be able to have a offensive capability at the front door. Tell us about the offensive capabilities. Well, I don't want to get into a lot of detail, um, but let's just say there's a ways of somebody <laughs> trying to kick in your front door. Uh, there are certainly ways of uh, neutralizing that uh, that threat right there at, at that location without you exposing yourself. Now we're just dying to know, is it gas? Is it electricity? Is it gun, <laughs> built-in gun turret or, you know, what? It's all of that. It's all, all of, of that. Yeah, okay, all right. It's all of that. Anything we else have... besides those? Or you don't want to say? <laughs> I'd rather not comment <laughs> the truth. Okay. Um, I, I, on, on a personal level, I, I, I am a civil engineer, and frankly, I don't even own a gun. Uh, we have Navy SEALs here on staff that handle all of that for us. They do, you know, they, they do the uh, the side assessments. They do the protection programs, the threat analysis. They actually can procure weapons for the clients, train them in it. They do what's called red teaming, uh, which is they take the client's house and they'll come up with four or five different ways that they're going to attack it based on what the adversary would see when they're coming at it. Then we would come up with countermeasures for that. Uh, and then you even come up with a plan in case you're caught outside and you have to retreat. You have your post-attack recovery plans, your, you know, your counterattack plans. Um, here again, not being a military person myself, I really don't. Um, I, I don't get involved in that aspect of it that much. But I can tell you, most of our clients um, use our Navy SEALs. I would say I'd say about two thirds of them. Well, what else should people know? Well, the one thing that we do know for sure after 21 years in the business is that no one knows what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, there's all you know everything from the Mayan calendar to asteroids to terrorism. Um, it's it's what you personally perceive as a threat. As as engineers and architects ourselves, it it, it really does not matter what the client wants protection from. Once we understand what the threat event scenario is and we establish the threat levels that the facility has to mitigate and we identify the assets to be protected, the family, the food, the weapons, the gold, the precious metals, whatever it is, and the duration times in the shelters, from that moment on, it's mainly engineering and physics for us. 
Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, good. Good stuff. Anything on the length uh, of time it takes to do a project? For example, if it takes six months to build a custom home, and I know it could take a lot longer than that, but how long does it take to build one of your homes? It, the construction time phase is basically the same as a normal house. We've done it, we've done it so long and so many times now that we've got it basically down to a science. I mean, you know, if it's a larger house, it's going to take longer. If the house is up on top of the mountain and we've got to truck everything out, whether you're building a hardened home or regular home, the construction time is basically the same. We here again, we've been in the construction business 35 years. We've been doing hardened structures for 21 years. We also build regular buildings also. We do, um, you know, large commercial construction also. So it's the time frame just because it's hardened, really doesn't uh, impact that much. And, and unless, of course, we're having to dig down 100 feet or something. Yeah, wow. Yeah, fantastic. Well, good stuff. Well, give out your website, if you would, and let people know where they can learn more about hardened structures. Well, thank you. I certainly will. Our website is hardenedstructures.com. That's spelled H-A-R-D-E-N-E-D-S-T-R-U-C-T. U-R-E-S, and of course our toll-free number here is 877-486-0084. Hey Brian, I've got another question for you. You have on your website the mobile shelters that are really, it looks like those are just EMP shelters. Are, Are those simply EMP or are those hardened, you know, as well for other things besides EMP? Yeah, we have, a, no, these are the prefabricated steel shelters. Uh-huh, yeah. I mean, those yeah. look like containers, like container shipping containers. Yeah, they're not. Uh, we've we've tried shipping containers over the years. They just do not work. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are fabricated out of a uh, 5 16th inch uh, plate steel. The fallout shelters are. They're one of our biggest sellers only because we can manufacture them at such a low cost, a six-person shelter with an NBC-protected air filtration and the uh, blast doors and blast valves, about 40 grand. The other shelters you may see on there are the Genesis. The Genesis shelter system is the the strongest pre-manufactured shelter system in the world today. It's our biggest seller in the Middle East, especially with the military. It's designed for taking a direct hit of an artillery shell. It has a rolled three-quarter inch steel shell on it. It's fully EMP protected. It has a three-bar blast overpressure rating, which is 45 pounds per square inch. It is extremely robust. And whereas we have put it in residential applications, it's primarily it's been used for the military. Yeah. And what are the prices of those? That will run right at around $500,000 for the basic living pod, not counting the connectors and stairs. Right, right. And so either of those shelters can be just put on a semi-truck and moved exactly. around, right? Yeah. That's so, exactly so, right. So if someone isn't sure where they're staying, for example, they might want to consider something like that. I mean, do, do, do people do that? Do they put something like that you know, near their home where they can get out to it if they need to? or sort of attached to the home or kind of like maybe attached to the side of a garage? Of course, it depends. Uh, Most of the, if they're attached to an existing house, it's usually through the basement wall. We'll put a connector from the shelter into the wall and then cut a hole in the existing wall. A lot of people want them detached from the house, put usually in a nondescript location out on the site somewhere. it's, It's client preference, whatever the client wants. With these types of products, there is no one-size-fits-all, obviously. And even after 20-some years when we think we've heard it all, it, it's, it's surprising how all of a sudden you hear something new one day. Sure, absolutely. You know, we haven't already thought of, you know, a year or so ago. Yep, that's for sure. Well, hey, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been an interesting education on uh, hardened structures. Well, thank you very much for having us. It's a great show you got, and we're certainly excited to participate with you. Thank you for joining us today for the Holistic Survival Show, protecting the people, places, and profits you care about in uncertain times. Be sure to listen to our Creating Wealth Show, which focuses on exploiting the financial and wealth creation opportunities in today's economy. 
Learn more at www.jasonhartman.com or search Jason Hartman on iTunes. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, offering very general guidelines and information. Opinions of guests are their own and none of the content should be considered individual advice. If you require personalized advice, please consult an appropriate professional. Information deemed reliable, but not guaranteed.